Welcome back. My name is Jason Stapleton. This is the Forex Market Preview, and you're going to want to watch all of this video this time. Now, I know sometimes you fall off, but you want to stick around for this one because I'm going to be doing a, a little bit of teaching when I'm going through this. I don't have time to do that every time we do the Forex Market Preview, but I do have time to do it today because we're going to focus my attention on mainly a couple of currency pairs where there's some stuff happening or there's some training value in it. So I want to go ahead and kick things off right now with Pound Yen. Now, I mentioned in the email that I sent to you guys today that Pound Yen looks like it's poised for a reversal, and I'm going to show you why I believe that and uh, and where we could potentially go, and I'm going to show you, a, well, let me just get to it. Instead of telling you what I'm going to show you, let me just show it to you. What I'm really interested in, if we, if we take a look at what's happened here recently, is the market has come down, we've rallied back up, we pull back, and now we've pressed up into a 1618 extension. Now, the way I came about that was taking an inversion of the last leg. So I'm looking at this leg right here. Boom, that moved down. And what I've done is, is I've grabbed my Fibonacci extension and I've inverted it. And we'll see the three Fibonacci levels that I really pay attention to on Fibonacci extensions. And that is the 127, the 1414, and then the 1618. And as you'll see, we kissed that 1618 and then pulled back off of it. Now, let me zoom way in here and we can take a look at this white candle here, followed by an engulfing black candle. Now, this right here, whoops, is what we call... I can do it like this. There we go. Is what we call a pipe, a stove pipe, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a pipe formation, and it signals a reversal here. It says, okay, we've had a long white bar up, and then a big black bar back down again, bearish engulfing. And now the market actually on Friday rallied all the way back up and kind of retested here. Um, this was an in what we call an inside bar. So if I delete this, you can see it. This bar right here is an inside bar because all of the price action happened inside of the previous day's high to low range. It's called an inside bar. Now this inside bar also suggests that the market may turn bearish. This coupled with the stovepipe here, or the pipe formation, gives us an indication that the market is looking to reverse. Now the fact that we ran up right up into the 1618 extension is another indicator that we might get a reversal here as well. Then if we go ahead and add to that, so if you're counting up here, we've got several, you know, about three different things here signaling a reversal. Now look at your RSI. Look at the initial RSI coming in here and where it came in. If I look at my the initial high that came in right here, and I look at where the market was trading as we came into that high, you'll notice that initial high here, and then we have the secondary high right here. And that came in, of course, at the most recent high. Now, what's interesting to note here is that we did not make a higher high. We retested. So the market on the RSI came up, went into overbought condition. That overbought condition was about 91. Then we pulled back down on the RSI to about 667 as the market retraced here. Just a very shallow retracement. And then, boom, we get another move higher. But we do so on less strength, looking at that RSI. RSI comes right back to about almost 91, about 91 again. And now has retraced to about 75. So we're getting basically a divergence on the RSI compared to price action, which continues to move higher. Now, what does all this tell us? Well, in, in, in my estimation, looking at the chart, we're seeing a continued up move into a candlestick formation that signals reversal. Your RSI is signaling weaker strength. You've come right up into a 1618 uh, extension, which is a, a golden mean, is, is, the, or is, the, is the golden ratio. All of this says to me reversal. Now, how do you play this? There are a couple ways to play it. We're on a daily chart right now. So the best way to play this is to end up shorting as close to the high as possible because the stops are going to need to go above the high. If we're wrong, if this market's going to do nothing but continue to go on a tirade, we're going to know that it's going to do that when it breaks above the previous high. So 4270s is the mark. We get above 4300, 4310. Hey, if we get to 4310, chances are we're probably on the wrong side of this trade. Uh, and reason being, looking at this, if we look back, I want to show you something else. I'm just going to drop in a 
horizontal line here. I'm going to drop it in on the close of the high, the highest close right there on that white candle, and then I'm just going to scroll back here, and we're going to see where that line comes in at. And as you see, when I scroll back, look at the support. The support that happened here, the resistance, it's kind of ugly because it doesn't happen like right on a dime, but you can see the support, 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 you can see the resistance, the resistance, the support back here. This is a key level. This is a level that the market has been paying attention to in the past. Up above, the next stop is going to be about 45.34. All right? So we're looking at potential shorts around 41.80s, 41.90s. The next potential shorting opportunity in looking at this is going to be around 45. So I'm not going to look at I'm not going to look to hold this thing from, you know, a break of 42s all the way to 45. I'm just going to get out of the position and maybe look for another shorting opportunity or look for a way to get with the trend up to 45s. So I can have a relatively tight stop right here above this area and look to short the market. Now, where could the market go here? Well, we've had a bit on a tirade here. We've gone straight north on a very conservative basis. If we just take the very last vertical move that happened here, we could see a retracement back down into the 382 here around 136. So we could move from where are we at currently? 141.60s, 70s, down to 136s. So if I'm drawing this in, and I draw in here's my potential reward, and you know, here's my potential risk, Look at that. Here's your risk. Here's your reward. This is assuming the market opens where it closed. It's a beautiful risk reward profile. But you may be saying to yourself, well, Jason, I don't, it's still, that's, that's a ton of risk for me as a daily chart. I don't really trade daily charts because my, my bank account doesn't really, uh, you know, allow for that. Um, I need something that's got me a little bit, little bit more conservative on my trading. Well, let's just go over and let's take a look at another time frame. Let's go ahead and look at, this is the same pound yen chart on the five minute chart. Okay. We're on a five minute here. Market's running up into a potential Gartley pattern. So we've gone all the way down here. We've gone from a daily chart all the way down to the, is this right? Five minute or is it 60? Hang on. It's a 60 minute. Excuse me. I knew that didn't sound right. All right. So we're going from a five minute chart down to a 60 minute chart. I looked at my, my deal here. It said five minute and I just, I'm like, that can't be right. It's got to be a 60 minute. So we dropped down from a daily chart to a 60 minute chart. All right. Same thing, just a lower time frame. And now we're going to grab my little triangle tool, and guys, I had somebody send me a note the other day, say, I don't have triangle tools on my on my uh, thing, so I must not be able to do advanced patterns. You can do it with line tools, but that's neither here nor there. I'm just using the triangles to show you the pattern. So the pattern here is a Gartley pattern, and that Gartley pattern looks to terminate right around a 142.18. What does that mean? It means we have selling opportunities at 142.18. Now, stops can go just above 142.88. So if you need to get a little better entry than just selling right here on the daily chart for the um, using the pipe formation that I outlined, you can wait for the market to rally up here into about 142.22. And that's going to give you an advanced pattern formation. And for those of you who don't trade the candlesticks, when you need something a little bit more, you may say, hey, Jason, I just don't, I don't do that. I need an advanced pattern. That's what I trade. Well, here's an advanced pattern for you that will work the same way. So we may see into the open a rally up into, you know, 142.20s, 142.50s, somewhere in there, but we shouldn't violate the highs at 142.75. If we do, then we're probably wrong and we need to probably be out of this position. But another way here to look at it. So anyway, it doesn't really matter if you look on the five minute chart here, you can see the consolidation. We're actually going to break out to the upside in order to get to uh, 142.20s where we will be looking to short. But again, if you're looking for that day trading time frame, you drop down to the five minute and now you're just playing the breakouts. You're just playing above support, new structure highs versus new structure lows. All right, 
But hopefully that gives you uh, a really good look at you know, this particular pair, what I'm watching, kind of how I'm looking at it. I'm using the RSI, I'm using some Fibonacci's, I'm using my structure, some candlestick formations, and then some advanced pattern formations in order to make some buying decisions and some selling decisions. And in this case, everything that I'm looking at is telling me that pound yen is more likely to decline than it is to advance. And that's all we need in order to make a trading decision is we need a probabilities in our favor, and we need a good risk reward. And if you have those two things, man, you can take a shot. And I may be wrong on this. And we, I may lose money on this trade. But if I do it 100 times out of 100, I'm going to make money. Because my risk reward is good. And because all of the indicators are lining up telling me that we're looking at a reversal. Now, there's my dog. There's my dog. Um, let's move over to Aussie Dollar. Uh, Aussie dollar, I actually do have a, a short position out, um, and I'm going to show you why. If we, I'm going to drop this down to a four-hour chart. This is going to be really the last thing that I'm going to talk about today because I uh, want to get you guys out of here. Um, you're looking at the pr look at the double top that occurred right here. Market came up, came back up into. We had a double top that was put in right here. This is on the four-hour chart on the Aussie dollar. Then the market broke down. We Boom, we have slammed down. And the market then rallied back up. Where did we rally up into? Bring in your Fibonacci retracement. Swing high to swing low. In this case, we came right up into the 786, right up into previous structure support. You see that support that occurred right there in that double top? We ran right back up into that. I can draw in, I can even draw in a line here and show it to you. Take my horizontal line against the highest close. Boom, look at that. Against the lowest close. Lined up perfectly. This is a the 2618 short. 2618 short. Back up into structure. Boom, we sell them. Market rolls over. Now, we haven't quite got back down into previous structure support, which would be our first target for the 2618. We'd be looking for 103.55s on this. Haven't quite gotten there yet. But when the market rallied up here, look at what else it did. Let's drop down one time frame to the 60 minute. We had another double top. Then the market broke down. Boom. Whoops. Grab my line tool. Broke down. Boom. And rallied back up. Where did we rally back up to? Let me grab my line tool from the close. Boom, to the lowest close of the double top. Let's grab my Fibonacci retracement tool, swing high to swing low. Right up into that 618 area, 2618. So you've got two 2618 trades working here on the Aussie dollar. One of them on the 4-hour, one of them on the 60-minute. You could have taken either one of them. In either case, you're up money. I'm up not enough to really care right now, but I'm up money. And looking for this market now to decline down into 103.99s, 104s. If you're holding the original double top on the 4-hour, you're looking for that market to come down into 103.50s. But guys, this is how easy it is. You start with your you start from the top down. Start from that daily chart and you take a look at the daily chart and you say, what am I looking at here? What has the market done? Well, we've been in this crazy consolidation area in here where the market has run basically, oops, let me grab the right tool, a box. And we failed to make it outside of that box. We've tried several times. We punched through the box, but we haven't been through. And the market is being supported on the downside. So right now, we're trading in congestion on the daily chart. Do I have a setup here? Do I have anything I can trade if I was a daily chart trader? Well, not right now. I don't see anything here. We're right in the middle of the range. I'm not on the high side. I'm not on the low side. We talked about earlier in the week, or I'm sorry, uh, in last week, if I drop down to the four hour, we talked about the market breaking the last downtrend. That happened right here. The market broke out. And I said, watch for the 2618 trade. 
which we then got, followed by another 2618 trade. So guys, by using that top-down analysis, you're going to have a good eye. You can follow a lot of pairs when you do this. And as long as you're patient, you only need you know one good trade a week, one good trade every two weeks. One good decision after one good decision. The outcome of the trade, one of the biggest problems that traders make is worrying about the outcome of that one trade. The outcome of the trade does not determine whether it was a good trade or a bad trade. The outcome does not consider, and that, that's the problem, is that everybody thinks they're looking at a scoreboard of whether they've made a good decisions or bad decisions. They're looking at their profit and loss, and they're saying they're basing whether or not they're doing things right or doing them wrong off of the profit and loss. That's the wrong way to look at it. You have to be looking at this in terms of, am I making sound fundamental decisions? Am I making trading decisions that over the long term are going to produce me a profit? And that's what brings me into the next point that I want to make, which is the Technical Trader Summit. Now, I don't care who you are. Um, I don't care where you come from. In March, I got an event that I think you should be at. Now, it's not for everybody. I will admit that. It's, it's not for newbie traders. Okay, If you don't understand what a pip is and you don't understand the difference between the bid and the ask, then this is not for you. Um, but... The Technical Trader Summit, I talked briefly about it last week, but a link that's right above my head right now will take you to all the information about that. I would highly suggest if you are serious about becoming a professional trader or if you are serious about learn, growing your skills as a trader, you need to attend this event because we are going to be talking about exactly what I just mentioned, which is the difference between making good decisions and making bad decisions, what constitutes good decisions, what are the best patterns to trade, what are the best trade setups that we know about. We're going to be building some trading strategies for you. During the course of the event, I'm going to be showing you some of the technology that we use to do that. And most importantly, is you're going to get to surround yourself with a lot of professional traders. Uh, my mastermind group will be there. Uh, and we will be having a, a lot of time of interaction and Q&A where you guys can come and learn and grow as a trader. Now, I haven't sent an email out about this. I haven't talked about it. I haven't really done anything with it at all except put the banner up. And we have already, right now in the last week, have filled about 10% of the seats. So if it's something that you're interested in doing, do it now. Don't wait, because I don't want you to miss out. We have a specific number of rooms, and there's a specific number of seats that we have at the event. I'm not going to get it too big. So please get involved with that now. Make your plans to attend. Talk to your husband, your wife, whatever. You get an extra ticket. You get to bring somebody for free. So you and your friend can come, or you and your wife, or you and your husband, whatever you want. Um... But I want you guys here because there's some, some really important stuff that I'm going to be teaching you and that Todd's going to be teaching you. We're bringing in some stuff on trader tax accounting. Um, so for those of you who are making money and who are successful, who want to be aware of some of the changes that are happening in the tax laws, uh, you'll want to be there for that. We're also going to be doing some trading psychology work, which I think is one of the foundations of any good trader, is uh, their ability to work on their own emotions. There's so much happening at this event. Um, there is, you need to be there. There is nothing else like this um, in, the, in the trading community and especially in the Forex community. Nobody else does what it is that we're going to be doing. So make plans to attend and uh, check out the link for more information. The, just a couple of setups today, guys. I didn't talk about much because I, uh, there are a couple of other things that we could go through, but I don't want this thing being like a half hour long or 45 minutes long. You shouldn't have to sit through that. We got, you know... Trading day is going to start here real quick. So let me get this out to you guys. Until next time, good luck and good trading. I hope you like the new website, um, and I'll talk to you soon.